Good morning, Year 6. It's Monday the 25th of January and this is our reading lesson. So our learning objective today is to draw inferences justifying these with evidence. So this week we're going to be focusing on our inference skills. Remember, when we're thinking about inference, we are being a detective. We are using clues from the text to come to a conclusion of our own. So, you have spoken at this last week as well, but just a quick example. If the book said something like, tears were streaming from the young girl's face, you would know from that, if she's got tears coming, if she's crying, she's sad. Okay? So, think very carefully. You need to be using those clues. We can't just make something up. So you started having a look at this book last week, The Rain Player, okay? We're going to have a read through it today. Um, just to remind ourselves, last week we looked at some specific um, paragraphs, pages, but I just want to read it as a story this morning, just so you really get the gist of it and understand what's going on. So here's just a blurb. It says, a year of terrible drought, the charts and calendars Proclaim and the people resign themselves to starvation, all except Pick, a young ball player, who stakes their survival on a game of pog chalk with the fierce rain god. If he wins, the rain will come. If he loses, however, all will be lost. The Maya civilization is the setting for this original tale of a boy who takes his faith and his peoples into his own hands. Okay, so here's page one. Follow it with me. The city lay in darkness, yet the Akin Mayor had been awake for hours. Trembling, the old priest consulted his charts and calendars once again. Continue ballet, they declaimed, a year of terrible drought. The sky reddened and the blazing face of the Lord Sun appeared. Without rain, his dreadful heat would soon devour the corn. Without corn, the people would perish. The Akime blew a long, clear note on his conch shell. The people had to know their faith. Perhaps Chak, the god of rain, would also hear and have mercy. On the ball court, Pick played Pocketok. So we know Pocketok is a game. Some of you have been talking about that in your writing with his friends. Like his father, who competed before the supreme ruler in full costume, Pick had great skill. He blocked a pass with his shoulder and sent the ball flying through the stone ring above his head. Game, he cried. Hush, warned the others. Listen. The call of the Akim May floated in the dusty air. The boys ran to hear what fate the new year would bring. OK, so there... When he shouts, game, he cried. Hush, one, the other, listen. There, I feel like they're getting a little bit annoyed with him. Okay, they're telling him, they're giving him a warning, be quiet. And then they're listening really carefully. Pick listened impatiently to the prophecy. Do the gods have nothing better to do than to torment us, he whispered to his companions. Things would be different if I were the acting mayor. I would just tell Chuck to get to work. The boy's laughter was cut short by a chorus of croaking. The little frogs of the forest, the you were, filled the trees about them. Knowing you were to be the herald of Chuck, the boys fled. But before Pitt could take a step, he was whisked into the swirling clouds above. The boys of Chuck rumbled like thunder. So if I'm using my inference skills there and it rumbles like thunder, imagine that thunder. Imagine when you're inside and you hear it rumbling outside, okay? It's loud, it's booming. Is it right for such a small creature to bear such a large tongue? Pick bowed before the rain god. Oh, mighty Chak, I misspoke, he said politely. I beg for your forgiveness. Forgiveness must be earned, Chuck replied. Pick thought quickly. May I earn it playing pocket talk? That is what I do best. You wish to challenge me, boom Chuck. Pick nodded nervously. Very well, Chuck agreed. Two days hence we shall play. 
Bring a team if you can find one. Two games of three shall decide your fate. What if I win? Pick asked. You will earn my forgiveness and reign for your people, Chak replied. And if I lose? Chak laughed and the air smelled like lightning. You will become a frog and croak my name forever. I don't want to be a frog, wailed Pip. You should have thought about that before the insulting chap, said his father sternly. Challenge your gods to pocket talk. No wonder your re friend refused to join your team. So there, if I'm going to use my inference skills, I'm thinking his father's speaking to him sternly. He's being very firm with him. Okay, he doesn't agree with him. No wonder your friend refused to join your team. So he's obviously asked the friends to join his team. But they don't want to join. Have a think, why not? They're not going to want to join when and play a god, okay? They don't want to lose, okay? So that's how I'm using my inference skills. I'm thinking a god's a very high person. He's probably very good at it. We've already said, listen to when he said that you want to challenge me, okay? So there I'm putting my thoughts together and that's why his friends must have refused. Won't you? Pick asked hopefully. No, I will not, replied his father. Much more than a skill is required. He emptied the contents of a leather pouch onto the table. At your head, Mech, these things were placed in your baby's hand. Sorry, in your baby's hand. A planting stick to make the hole for the corn seed and a ball. So, the het mech. We don't know what that means, okay? It's something to do with the Mayan culture. Where he's saying this here, we're placed in your baby hands. This is imagining to me that this was when he was a baby and it's maybe one of the first things that happened. It's maybe a little bit like a christening that we'd know of. And they were given things that they need. So a planting stick, corn. We know how important now after looking at the Mayan creation story, how important corn is. We now know how important a ball is if you're wanting to play pocket talk. Okay, so those things were given to him to basically start his life. To make me a great player, Pick interrupted, it has done so. But there is more, his father chided. Here is a jaguar tooth that you might share jaguar's fierce strength. And here is a Quetzal feather that you might receive Quetzal's silent speed. So if you don't know, a Quetzal is a bird. Okay, so if you're going to get speed, it flies back. And then we're going to get the Jaguar's strength from the tooth. And most precious of all, the water of the sacred snow that you might make its deep wisdom your own. So we looked at that last week when we were looking at Chichen Itza. Seek their counsel. Perhaps they will know how to help you. Rising early, Pitt came upon Jaguar by first light. Of villain, he said respectfully, I have need. Indeed, replied Jaguar, inspecting his claws. All the forest knows of your plight. Fate is against you. But the victory over Chak would give us rain, and that is something we sorely need. I will help you if I can. But how? Doesn't your father wear a Jaguar coat when he plays before royalty? Tomorrow, I will be your clerk. More than that, I do not know. At noon, Pick searched the trees for a sign of Quetzal. Auxilian, I have... He cried, I have need. That's what that means. Quetzal lit upon a branch and regarded him kindly. I have heard of your challenge to Chak, he said. Fate is harder than stone, yet it must be broken for when for the rain to come. I will help you if I can. How? asked Pick. Doesn't your father wear a fancy headdress when he plays before royalty? My feathers will be your crown. More than that, I do not know. As the sun set, Pick lowered himself into the darkness of the sacred snow. Far below, dark waters swirled through the caves. 
through the great cave it had carved below the earth. Odzillan, Hick whispered, and his plea echoed in the vastness. Remember vastness, it's vast, it's really big. With the faintest breath of air, the words of the Tanoth entered his ear. I know your step, the Tanoth sighed, for I flow beneath the ball court. Though fate says otherwise, Chak's reign must continue, for they are my constancy and strength. Go now, tomorrow, I will be with you. But how, Pick asked. Tomorrow came the echo and all was still. The next day, all marvelled as Pick strode towards the ball court. A magnificent jaguar cloak hung from his shoulders and brilliant quetzal feathers streamed from his headdress. Then the people grew silent as the UO announced the arrival of Chak in the sky above. The rain god nodded his readiness to the Akin Mare. With shaking hands, the priest held the ball aloft. Begin, he cried, and cast it into the car. So, task one, I want you to summarise what has happened so far in the first half of the book. Once you've done that, task two, I've uploaded a sheet which has the previous page on and it's got either speech bubbles on there or there's a blank one if you would prefer, that might be more challenging. And I want you to jot down the inferences that you have made about the text. On one of the sheets, I've highlighted the sections which I would like you to in make inferences about and I've put speech bubbles on. On the other one, I haven't done this, so this will be more challenging, so have a decide which one you'd like to do. So you should have now done your inferences. Okay, so we're going to have a look at them and discuss them. So it says, the next day all marvelled as Pick strode towards the ball court. Okay, so the inference that I have made here is that Pick is quite confident about this. If you strode across somewhere, you're walking with a bit of determination. Okay, think about, you know, if you say you've got a stride in your step, okay, you're being quite forward, you're getting there. He's not scared, okay, he's not sort of, you know, walking in really slowly, looking around, being nervous, okay. He's got a bit of something about him, he's really confident. So that's the inference that I've made there. The next one, the people grew silent, okay. So, Chuck was being announced, his arrival was, he'd just arrived. And the people grew silent. So there, I'm thinking that the people were quite nervous. They didn't know what was going to happen. Okay. And Chak has obviously got um, people being quite either intimidated by him or, you know, he's his high, per, high up person. So they are quite sort of nervous, worried about what's going to happen. So it's not like when Chuck arrived, they all started screaming, cheering, you know, like you might do when you go and watch some sort of game. They were all a bit, maybe a bit intimidated, a bit worried about what was going to happen. OK. With the next one, I've put with shaking hands, the priest held the ball. So. I'm thinking here the priest is nervous, okay? This probably isn't something that the priest would normally do. It wouldn't be such a, a big game with this god and then pick, sort of trying to battle with him through this game. So the priest is quite nervous. So he's got shaking hands. So I'd like you to upload your inferences. Um, to Edmodo for us to have a look at. Um, tomorrow we're going to continue with the next part of the story. Okay, so we'll have a read of that and um, make some more inferences about it. So I will speak to you tomorrow, year six. Goodbye.